getting ready to try to catch a big one here. As we are ready to break the silence. 40 laps ready to begin. Norman getting the jump. And Bo Norman kind of took Monahan by surprise. Settling underneath the 55 of Monahan is uh, Lutz, but that did not count. Nicholas Hovey, what a season he has had to win races at all three Connecticut tracks. Better start. But Norman still trying to get the jump. Lutz has room on the inside, almost going three wide, heading into turn number two. Lutz backs out of it. Now it's a double wide battle. On the outside, Bo Norman. And a counter move by Monaghan. Norman said he ran an open race early in the year and it was the most fun he has had in a long time. Lutz is settled in the third. And Nicholas Hovey in the number four position and a yellow flag comes out. In fifth. Also a speedball regular, Joe Arena is not. So it is time to launch. Great restart, Brian Norman. As Norman took off in the middle of the starter's box, Lutz moves into second. So Monaghan did not come up to speed and he's trying to make up for it now. In the jet stream, Sean Monaghan, as he puts a, a little distance between himself and Eric Lutz, the big tuna trying to reel Monaghan in. In fourth is Nicholas Hovey. And he is a guy who lost a position right now as uh, he fades into fifth. And it looks like the doctor is on the move in the top four. So John Porter said he will be in action all weekend long. Right now there's a double foul battle in front of him between Lutz and Monaghan. And that has enabled Bo Norman to have a one-man breakaway. Porter getting a visit from the 16 of Hovey. Then Baxter is next in the zero. So Chad Baxter putting some heat on the back bumper of the Hovey car. Big lead for Norman. And when they hit the line, we'll be able to figure out how big it is between Monaghan and Lutz. And Lutz is in second. But he trails by about a two-tenths of a second. So it is Norman out in front. Now Lutz turning up the volume, trying to carve underneath Monaghan. Second and third could fit in his sleeping bag. In fourth is the doctor, John Porter with hubby fifth. Baxter is running six. And Baxter started to make a move as he tries to meet Cleaver his way underneath Hovey. Up at the front of the field, Norman has stretched things out. And there are stars between Norman and the second place guy of Sean Monahan as they rumble off the corner with Lutz in second. Lutz has been on the podium a few times this year but has not won in the regular street stock division. Early in his life, he was a regular at Riverhead and had eight victories. So they are sharing the same oxygen. The 36 of Lutz and the 55 of Monaghan. And then, poised to make a move, John Porter can be a very dangerous competitor. Let's see who he decides to follow. He goes to the outside and wants to follow Monaghan. Now he tucks it in behind Lutz. Baxter has gotten by Hovey, and Baxter has a top five car. Here is Lutz on the inside as he tries to Jenny Craig his way underneath Monaghan. Monaghan has a spot, but all over him like needles on a porcupine. Is that number 36, uh, number 55? and the 36 of Lutz. Now it is a double file battle for the next position. Porter is on the outside and trying to dart underneath him is Baxter. Coming off of turn number two, it was a great turn for Monaghan as he has a half a station wagon advantage over Lutz. Lutz trying to make it back. It's been a joyride for Bo Norman as he is leading by a huge margin over the 55 of Monaghan. 
And we have battles all over the track, including one across the finish line where Crystal Sierandinsky is. DeFranco in the 49. In the 13, that is Paul Williams. But up at the front, it is Bo Norman. And it won't be too much longer. And Bo Norman will have to figure out a way to get by slower traffic and problems in turn two. Oh, and he will be trying to corkscrew his way through traffic to get back to where he was, Bo Norman. So now we are ready to roll. And a good start for Lutz. He doesn't have too much experience restarting with a lead, but he did a good job on that occasion. But Baxter on the verge of doing a better job on the outside as they roll in their way into the fourth corner. Baxter having the lunge. Can Baxter get the lead? Not yet. It is still Lutz in front. Lutz by a molecule over Baxter. They are handcuffed together. Now Baxter trying to break away from Lutz. Here comes Baxter. New leader on lap number 17. It is Chad Baxter. Running in the number three position is Monahan. Lutz wants the advantage back. Let's see if he can get it. As a helter-skelter off the corner. It is still Baxter in front. Running in the number four position is Joe Kohler. So Joe Kohler has come on from obscurity to move into the top four. Nobody has passed more cars than Kohler has. Battle up at the front. It is still the uh, zero of Baxter holding off Lutz. So Baxter is able to drill his way off the corner. And Lutz is sitting in his lap. They are sharing the same Hans device as the top two cars could fit in an ice cube. But there is no meltdown for uh, Baxter. Here comes Kohler on the inside of Monaghan. This is what Joe Kohler likes to do. Go to the inside. And he is able to excavate his way underneath Monaghan. So Kohler was so far back, he was almost on uh, Route 95. But he is in third place. Monaghan is in fourth and fifth is Nick Hovey. And there is a double file battle emerging behind him. We have seen a lot of that, and Joe Arena is able to pull away from Clemens as they jackknife their way off the corner. The fastest pony in the merry-go-round continues to be Baxter. Lutz on the inside, and we'll see if that can make a difference for him. Here comes Kohler. Hounding and pounding the back bumper of the Lutz car. Opening up some room down low. Now Lutz, if he knows the strategy here, will try to protect the bottom, but we have a yellow. And a problem in turn four. And the top two cars could fit in a fire hydrant as they come blasting off the turn with Baxter having the advantage. Now Lutz needs to worry about Sean Monahan. The Velvet Hammer moves a second. Lutz is going backwards. So there is something amiss on the runner-up position against Baxter. So Lutz getting a reprieve. Let's see if he can take advantage of it. Baxter, a tiny advantage over Lutz only by about a teardrop. And now Monahan has the power. Once again, Lutz getting lost on the outside groove. Moving underneath him is Nick Hovey. And Lutz trying to hang on for fourth, and it looks like he will be able to do that. And Plemons right behind him. So Brandon Plemons is running fifth. Jim Sylvia is sixth, and the battle is on between Chad Baxter and Sean Monahan. Monahan inching closer. Might have had a forearm shiver to the back bumper of the Baxter car. He is going to try it again. 
as here is Monahan, all over Baxter like gum on the bottom of his shoe. But Baxter beats him across the line with 13 laps to go. In third, Nicholas Hovey, and Hovey is a closer. We have learned that in his brief racing career. And then Lutz, Brandon Plemons fifth, Jim Sylvia sixth, Joe Arena seventh, Sean Gedeke eighth, Bo Norman moves up to ninth, Troy Waterman tenth, and Joe Kohler has come from no man's land into tenth place. So what an amazing turn of events there. There is a little cushion for Baxter as he is leading by, leading by about a, the length of a knitting needle. So a tree branch advantage for Baxter. Then Monahan in second. And now all by his lonesome in third is Hovey. And uh, Lutz, even though he lost a couple of spots, has now uh, solidified himself in fourth. In fifth is Plemons, and Bo Norman is moving through the field into the top six. Norman attacking. On the inside is Baxter dealing with the Velvet Hammer. The Showman Sean gets a good start. Baxter gets a better one. Now look at Hovey, Carter 16, trying to yank second away from Monahan, but he couldn't get underneath him. Monahan has some firepower on the outside as they bazooka their way into turn number four. They are locked up, ball and chain together. Baxter and Monahan with Hovey in third. And now trying to make a move in fourth. That is Brandon Plemons. Brandon Plemons has done more with less than almost any driver in speedball history as he is leaning on Nicholas Hovey. Great battle for the lead. Sean Monahan takes it from Baxter. Lap number 32. It is Monahan winning the outside battle as they swing it off the corner. Baxter is still there. Baxter is all over him like graffiti on a billboard. And trouble in turn one. Two cars get tangled up to, to do some passing. The decibel level is ready to increase. Monahan, it looked like he timed it perfectly, getting the jump on Kohler, and here's Hovey again. Hovey digging underneath his hero car, a Baxter, trying to move into second, has the nose there, has quarter of the car underneath the zero. As they roller coaster their way into turn number four, Monahan has a lead. Hovey moving into second, and Bo Norman is in fourth, going underneath Baxter. They are dead even. Fight for third. Baxter on the outside, and Norman on the inside as they diesel their way off the corner. Here is Norman trying to get the schnoz in front. Looks like he does. Norman is in third after being in obscurity. Now he's going after Hovey. Has leverage on the inside. Kohler is hooked up with Norman. He is behind the back bumper of the 12th car. Bo Norman is in second place, down to the final four laps. Almost a three-wide scenario behind him. The guy on the inside is Baxter, having the edge. Pulling away is Monahan. It is the zero 12 car. Bo Norman, there is a cavalry behind him, but Norman is equal to the task. Then we have Baxter, and underneath him is Joe Kohler. Then Hubby rounding out the top five. Here comes the Velvet Hammer. Has not had much success with the swag and wagon this year. That is about to change. Kohler underneath Norman. As Kohler came out of the shadows to move into second. As what an upward move that was by Kohler. Here comes Monahan, ready to face the white flag. One more lap, but in this race, you can't take anything for granted. Then it's Kohler followed by Norman and Baxter. Hubby trying to do some damage on the outside. Less than a lap to go. The Swaggin' Wagon is in Dragon. Here he is, the Velvet Hammer to win it, Sean Monahan. It's second Kohler. Norman is third, and I think Hubby got the best of Baxter who spins around like a whirly bird like a helicopter propeller, and no serious damage there. He was in a very vulnerable position, 
as Hovey and Baxter got together in the fight for fourth. And stranger to the front stretch in victory lane. Uh, must have used uh, experience to best the rest of the field. Winner, Sean Monahan. Thanks a lot. Um, you know, it's good to hear some cheers for once. Holy cow. You know, uh, and I think some of that cheering might be because it was obvious that the 55 really was not worthy of that win. There were, there were many faster cars, but, you know, God has been gracious to me. And uh, most of you know on those restarts, I had to judge them right. The, 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 the skip in the car was so bad, I couldn't even execute a donut at the end of the race. But I'm just amazed. I've been racing since 1998. And except for my two years of management, I had never gone a year without a victory lane. And this was almost it in 2021. So don't be surprised if I take the rest of the weekend off. God bless you all. Thank you so much.